Hey guys, Mr. Jansen here. We're about to go over the 100 illustrated ways to pass your science regions. Um, first, I'd like to thank Mr. Sheehan for putting this, uh, you know, illustrated ways together. Um, I think it's a great review for the region. So uh, let's get started. Um, number one, if pressure and temperature are constant, the density of any substance, regardless of its size, is the same. So as long as you have constant pressure and temperature, whether the size gets bigger or its size gets smaller, the density is going to remain the same. Okay, um, like I said, as long as that has that constant temperature and pressure. Um, if you're going to see this as a practice question on the Regents, um, it says here if the object is cut in half, the density of each piece will what? Well, once again, if it has that constant temperature and pressure, then you're going to have it be the same as the original object. Okay, so if you cut it in half, chop it up, throw it against the wall, doesn't matter. Um, the density will remain the same. Okay. Um, number two. Okay, as pressure increases on a solid or gas, the density increases. So once again, as you kind of squish something, okay, if you, as, as you squish that solid and gas, that means the molecules are coming closer together. If you're affecting the, the molecules getting closer and closer together, then once again, the density is going to increase, okay, or that's a direct relationship. All right, so once again, when you squish or kind of squeeze it together, the density is going to increase. If you're going to see that uh, as a region's question, it says if a sample of iron were compressed, what would prob probably occur? Once again, you're squishing the sample, so that means the volume is actually decreasing, but the density is going up, okay? Um, so once again, uh, that would be choice two, okay? Great. Um, number three, and once again, at any point, if you want to pause it and answer the question on your own, that's fine. I'm just going to move at a good pace for certain students who may know certain concepts, okay? Uh, number three, as temperature of the matter increases, its density decreases. So once again, um, as you increase the temperature, that means the molecules are going to start going a little crazy. They're going to start bouncing off one another. They're spreading out. So if they're spreading out, that means the density is actually going to drop because the molecules aren't as confined in such a small space, okay? Um, so once again, the region's question, as air on the surface of Earth warms, that means it gets warmer so the molecules spread out. What's going to happen to the density? Once again, the molecules are further apart, so your density is going to decrease, okay? Uh, number four, water expands when it freezes, okay? So once again, Water is a very special substance. With most objects, the density is highest in the solid phase, except water, okay? Water actually expands when it freezes. That's because um, when it freezes, the molecules actually spread out. Those H2O molecules actually spread out, okay? So when that happens, um, it's actually become a, a, a little bit more buoyant, all right? So it's actually going to be a little less dense in the solid phase. That's why ice floats. Okay. If you were to see this as a region's question, um, it says the diagram below shows the process of weathering called, called, excuse me, called frost wedging. Frost wedging breaks the rocks because as water freezes, it increases in what? Well, if it freezes, that means it's kind of taking up more space. Okay, So it's going to increase in volume, or choice C. Okay, Very good. Um, let's move on. Let's go to number five. Many changes are cyclic or cyclic in nature, an event that repeats itself. There's a lot of cyclic things in earth science. You could have the tides, as shown here, you know, the seasons, uh, day, night, um, you know, the, fa the phases of the moon. These are all cyclic changes. In other words, they're events that repeat themselves. And that graph, that up and down graph, is very indicative of a cyclic change, okay? If you were to see this as a region's question, okay, um, based on observations made in the Northern Hemisphere, which statement is best supporting the evidence that the Earth rotates on its axis? As soon as you say C rotates, you should think spinning, okay? And what causes, okay, or result of the spinning is going to be what? It's going to be those circumpolar stars that actually appear to kind of go around Polaris. Once again, Polaris is the North Star. Everything's going to appear to go around that, okay? So they're called circumpolar stars. That's a great example of a cyclic change. Number six, water is most dense at four degrees Celsius when it's a liquid. Okay, water we talked about before is uh, a very special substance in the sense that um, it is most dense at four degrees. When you get a little bit less than four degrees, that means you're getting approaching freezing. Once again, the molecules are going to spread out when, when it freezes, when it kind of gets to that crystalline shape. Um, 
also when you increase you know the temperature then the, it's, it may get to a point where it may, may begin to kind of spread out and then maybe even evaporate at four degrees Celsius is when it's most dense okay this is actually right on the reference tables for you this is not something you have to memorize this is the properties of water chart right from the reference tables okay um, if you were to see this as a regions question, it says water as water cools from four degrees to zero degrees, it de its density what? Well, if it's most dense at four degrees, then as you go away from four degrees, what's going to happen to your density? Well, it's going to decrease. Okay. Number seven, the closer the isolines are, the steeper the slope or the gradient. So once again, isolines connect points of equal value. Okay. So when they get closer and closer together, they're increasing uh, the gradient. Okay, because you're having a quick change over short distance. Whenever you have a quick change over short distance, that's kind of what a hill is. Okay, because you're you're basically changing the elevation very quickly over a small distance. Okay, so once again, the closer the lines are together, uh, the steeper the slope. And there's your formula for gradient from your reference tables down there. Change in field, change in field value divided by distance. Um, Here's your region's question. On each topo map below, the straight line distance from point A to point B is 5 kilometers. Which topo map shows the steepest gradient between A and B? Okay. Well, you're looking for the choice that has the most lines in the shortest distance. Okay. Well, all the distances look pretty equal, so you're actually just looking for the one with the most lines, and that's going to be choice 4. Okay. Moving right along, we're going down to number eight. Percent deviation. Okay, a note on this. This was kind of taken off the reference tables after 2011. It's still a very important concept, though. Um, it says when calculating percent deviation, the accepted value is the correct answer, while the measured value is subject to error. So, students get confused when they see difference from accepted value in the numerator. What does that mean? Well, they just don't want anything negative in the numerator posi position. So all you're going to do in the calculator is first put the biggest number and then subtract it from the smallest number. So you're going to take your 100, okay, and you're going to subtract um, 98.89, okay, and that's going to be 1.11. Then you're going to divide that by your accepted value, okay. So your accepted value is 100. So you're going to hit um, divide by 100, okay, and then you're going to get that, but the last step is multiply everything by 100. Okay, so you're actually going to get the same answer you just did, but you want to follow all the steps in the formula, and it's going to be 1.11%. That's your percent deviation. That means that this measured value was 1.11% away from the actual accepted value. Okay. Um, great. Number nine. Uh, dynamic e equilibrium means balance. So what that's referring to is... Um, the amount of stuff into the system is equal to the amount of stuff going out of the system. For the example here, they're saying the amount of gravity going in is equal to the amount of pressure going out. Okay, Or you could have the amount of energy being absorbed is equal to the amount of energy being ra uh, radiated. That's also dynamic equilibrium. If you're going to see it as a region's question, it says the table below shows the rate of erosion and the rate of deposition at four stream locations. Uh, a state of dynamic equilibrium exists at what location? Well, okay, you want to equal equilibrium okay so the choice B is going to be the one that has the amount of erosion equal to the amount of deposition number 10 the earth absorbs short waves and radiates long waves okay short waves are visible light long waves is infrared energy so this is an example of the greenhouse effect it's basically showing you how short wavelengths come into the atmosphere and then they get re-radiated as heat as heat energy and some of that heat energy gets trapped okay and heats up the earth that's why we have life on earth okay um, some of that escapes though, all right? So if you're going to see this as a region's question, it's going to ask you most of the energy radiated by the Earth's surface at night is in the form of what? So at night, that means it's getting re-radiated, so it's going to be heat energy or infrared rays. You have to know that heat means infrared. Okay, guys, we're going to stop there. Thank you for watching. Uh, we just covered 1 through 10. Now in my next video, we're going to cover 11 through 20. So Stay tuned and thanks for watching.